Hello. Me. D. H. Pyen. Um. Yeah, I'm doing something a little different today. Seems like everything is running. That's good. Um. Okay. So yeah, I'm doing something a little different today. Um. Because. Um. Well. I should have prepared what I want to say. <laughs> That's not how I do things, I guess. Uh, so, I don't know. Um, I was thinking about what to do with my spare time recently. And the um, thing I did a lot in the past was doing YouTube stuff and, and, and like doing gaming videos on YouTube and occasionally streaming on Twitch. Um, well, not only Twitch, but YouTube, Steam, I guess. And um, to be honest, it's like I'm doing this for a long time now, and it's 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 fun doing it. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I have fun doing it, and uh, I get games for free, which is great. Um, but it's not really going anywhere, and I know why. Basically, the the current format of what is videos and PPPs is not actually good for growing a small channel. Uh, it might work if the channel is bigger. It's good to, like, um, if you can consistently hit the top spots in the search for a new game and stuff like that, then then that's a viable format. But right now it's not. It would have been more more efficient, let's put it that way, to, to stick to the old Let's Play format because that actually did hit search ranks quite a bit, mainly because of the name. People just search Let's Play game name for reasons. Um... But I didn't want to do that anymore a few years ago, so I switched. And I don't really, I, 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 I'm happy with the change. Like, I got annoyed doing Let's Plays and changed the format to something I like, or I like more, um, on a consistent basis. But it's not really getting anywhere right now. And um, I'm waiting for a due process, and when due process gets li it goes live, or at least leaves NDA, um, I'm definitely going to do content for it. I'm going to stream it. I'm going to make videos, shoutcasts, whatnot. Um, so that's going to happen, but I'm not sure when it's going to happen. And I was thinking, okay, until then, do I really want to spend more time doing videos about gaming, which are not getting a lot of attraction? Um, or do I actually do something else I want to do? Hi, Luna Link. Welcome to the stream. Um, and I decided I wanted to want to do something else I want to do, um, which like, yeah, which like the thing is when, when I, when I do more, if I would do more gaming videos right now, it would just be like a, a filler anyway, because the moment due process leaves NDA, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, gonna focus my content on that quite a bit. And so, um, yeah, so that will switch my content for around anyway, at least for a while. I'm, I'm eventually going to go back to do do um, general gaming videos or do a mix of the two or whatever. Um, that's just how I operate. But um, for a while, it would be due process only. And um, speaking of my experience, by the way, with other games, Strife and whatnot. And um, so it would just be filler. Like, I would just fill the time until due process leaves NDA. And it would not actually... Like, it would, it would be fun. As I said, it would be fun. I, I enjoy doing gaming videos. Um, but it would not... I, do, I don't lose much not doing it. Like, the channel is not going to grow in that time, or not grow significantly, and um, I'm not going to learn anything significant. And um, so I decided I could, I could switch it out for doing something else that's fun. And you know what else is fun? Developing games. <laughs> not just talking about them. Because that's something I always wanted to do. I never really... Like, I started it multiple times, but never really pulled through with it like i have a somewhere on my computer is a prototype for a for a um, real-time card game um i also have an almost finished prototype well very very early prototype but it's a prototype for an idea of a hacking game a programming based hacking game um um but i never 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 did go through with those ideas and i'm not sure that's gonna gonna be different this time but but um, I, I just decided I wanted to, to try it again. Um, I, have, I have an idea, or a few ideas rather, um, on what to do. And I want to try it again. I want to see where it goes and um, spend my spare time I have in the evening usually um, to, well, develop a game. Um, because, yeah, as I said, that's something I, I like to do as well. It's, it's fun, but I, I 
I usually don't like I I didn't do that in the last few years and a lot. And one of the reasons was because I was doing YouTube. Um, I was was trying to go somewhere with YouTube. Like the idea always was like maybe I can grow the channel to a significant size and then I can um, then I can I can like that I actually can work less basically um, and have more time to then develop a game. But that's just like, why not just develop a game? The channel is not going to go anywhere right now anyway. So, so um, yeah, and I thought maybe doing it publicly on stream and stuff might be fun. Uh, maybe people are interested in it. If not, that's fine as well. Um, but it's nice to talk to people um, about my ideas and stuff. And I feel like it might keep me motivated or invested more. Um, and I don't know, maybe people are interested. And if they are, that's great. If not, well, they're not, but I wanted to try it. So here we are. Um, hi, Samuel Norman. Welcome to the stream. Um, so yeah, that, that's where we are. Um, the name right now is Pionectory. That's not actually the name of the game. Pionectory will be the foundation for a game. I'm not quite sure which game yet. <laughs> so um, uh, Pionectory is, is a stupid name, by the way. It's just like a mix of TH Pion and Factory. It's just... Yeah, it's it's very um, egocentric, <laughs> but it was I, I I bad with names. It's just what I came up with. I was thinking about something with factory, and then yeah, let's go with pioneer. But why not? Uh, it's dumb. It's it, but it's not going to be the name of the game. In probably not going to be the name of the game anyway. It's it's the name for the foundation. So the idea is to have like a, a core foundation of core mechanics about a two D factory um, puzzle game. So think. Factorio or Infinity Factory in 2D, something along those lines, like just the core, like the core mechanics, putting conveyors down, having resources going from A to B, having spawners and sellers or consumers or whatever, and um, having pushers and sensors and, and whatnot. And that's going to be the core. Um, yeah, like it's just going to be a, a class library, just or yeah, so it's just going to be code. It's not actually having. Uh, not gonna, actually going to have a, a front end or a rather one, a rather like a, a GUI, a real GUI. I can't talk, I promise. Um, it's not going to have a proper user interface because it's going to be a foundation for a game. And I have multiple ideas and one of those games will going to use that foundation or maybe I do all of them or multiple of them. And they're going to use the foundation and put a user interface on top of it and make it a full game. And um, the obvious idea, obviously, like the, the simple and straightforward idea is to just make a puzzle game. Like just do what Infinity Factory does, um, have separate puzzles with optimization scores and whatnot, but in 2D, so top down. Um, and that would be pretty straightforward. And I think it's a good concept. Um, it's nothing really crazy though. And I'm not sure I'm actually good at creating puzzles. I, I'm not sure. I might be okay with creating pu engineering puzzles at least. Um, I never really tried. I'll have to see if I, I'm actually good at that or if I have to find someone who's good at that. I don't know. Um, so that's an idea, but it's not actually what, what is my, it's not my primary uh, or not my number one candidate. Um, I was also thinking about an idle game um, because I, I, I occasionally play idle games. It's, it happens. Um, all of the time, like every few months or years, I find a new one. I find it, like, that keeps my interest for a few weeks, and um, I play them. And I actually like the the concept of an idle game on on the on the phone quite a bit. Um, you can just check in during the day when you're on the on the on the toilet or waiting for something, whatever, um, and and check it out and do some things and then leave and come back a few hours later and have some progress. That's I think that's a that's a good concept for a phone game, and um, there are some factory idle games out there, but none of them are really great. Uh, they all have the downsides. And I feel like I have played my fair share of idle games and factory games to have an idea about what is what makes those kind of games good. And I have some ideas how to combine those two, genre, two, two, those two genres um, in a good way. Like, as I said, there are factory games, there are idle games, there are factory idle games, but uh, most factory idle games are not, that I played at least, are not that great for one of the other. They're not necessarily bad. I played a few of them for quite a while, but I always felt they're a little lacking or can be done better. But the crazy idea I actually had and that, that um, well, catched my interest was the idea of a cross of FDL, Faster Than Light, and something like Factorio or 
yeah, Infinity Factory kind of. I don't know. The mechanic. I'm, I'm thinking more of Infinity Factory because the mechanics I have in mind will be more close to Infinity Factory than Factorio. Like, I want to have products that are a little bigger and not just like one tile. And you and the challenge should be to move them around and weld them together and rotate them and whatnot. So that's why I'm more thinking Infinity Factory f mechanically thinking. But but gameplay wise, um, for this one. Um, uh, more think like Factorio. So you have resources, a resource spawner inside a spaceship that produces resources or spawns resources and you transport them and put them together to to put them into your guns and your engine, your sheet generator, whatever. And then you're going to have a little roguelike um, FTL style where you fight other spaceships with your spaceships that's powered by your factory. And um, I thought that's a cool idea. Um, and maybe I go with that. It's Probably the most ambitious one of the three, uh, but it's also the most unique one. I don't think anyone ever did that. Um, at least I don't know a game that does something like that. Like, even close. Like, I don't... I imagine there are some games where you build a spaceship that's built, like, with an inner factory. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know one, but I, I, I'm i probably not the first person who comes up with that. Not necessarily a spaceship, but some sort of of vehicle um, where you actually have, like there are games where you build your own vehicles, quite a few actually, like you go spaceship or ships or, or whatever, airships or whatnot. But I can't think of a game that actually forces you to build like the, like a, an inner working of it. Like um, there are games like there, there, there are tower defense games that do that, where you have to manage your resources with, with conveyors and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know a factory-based game, and they definitely don't know one that's actually like a roguelite and stuff like that. So I don't know. Uh, it's just a cool idea. So um, um, that's that's one of the options, and it's the, it's the one I like the most so far. But I'm not sure it's the one I'm gonna go with. Hi, fishy fishy. Welcome to the stream. Oh, I f forgot. I should put the I should put the link. I should put the link uh, in the YouTube description as well. I'm a dummy. Uh, it's that one. Um, where is it? Description. Not that, I'm not sure where that shows up. Let me check my channel really quick. Eh, eh, YouTube. Just actually wrong. Let's go to YouTube. YouTube. Uh, my channel. In this browser, not going on with that. Okay, wait. Give me a second. Other browsers fucking around. Let's try Firefox. YouTube. There we go. There the video is, stream is live. Uh, yeah, okay. It showed up in it. Um, I should put it, probably put one of that. More about the project. Dave, there we go. Okay, that should work. Pick something else really quick and then we're gonna start. E where is it? Where? There. Go. Okay. Ah. Uh, back to this view. Yes, up there we go. Okay, so yeah, that's the idea, that's the vision right now. Um let's get a little bit more concrete and talk about the roadmap. So I'm, I'm, I don't have anything yet. I'm, I'm going to show you really quick. I have, an, I have an open, empty version of Visual Studio. I didn't even create a project yet. I just have an open IDE. It's clear. IDE. It's clear. It doesn't, like, I didn't do anything yet. So um, I, the first step is going to be to set up the project. And I'm going to... I should have put C Sharp somewhere in the, in the description, I imagine, I think. Let me do that really quick. I've, I'm... That's important. <laughs> and it's stream info. 
uh, game in C sharp. There, I don't know if there's attack for different languages on Twitch. No. Oh wait, did it save? It didn't. Press the cancel button. Well, press escape. Um, there we go. Uh, Um, not do I touch the Steam title? No, that's not worth it. It's not like anyone is watching on Steam anyway. Okay, so um, yeah, the first step is going to be the setup for the project, and then create some core classes and get some base stuff done. And that's that's going to take a while actually. So don't don't underestimate this, especially the second step. But this is actually going to be quite a big step, and I probably have to create more sub steps for it before we move on. Um, so I imagine, I'm not sure yet, but I don't know, we'll see. I didn't think about this a lot yet. This is just like, a, I, I wrote this down in, in a minute or so, or 30 seconds. Uh, well, a minute, I guess. But yeah, so this, I didn't plan this through at all. Well, you're going to join my, my work process, I guess. So um, yeah, the idea is to create some core classes, then get some example, like some basic elements, so we actually can do something. So here's some going to be some interfaces and some basic stuff, and then I'm going to do some um, basic example elements, and then I'm going to do quick and dirty a prototype to visualize it. Um, so we can actually try it, right? And uh, the plan is to use .NET Blazor for it, um, which is a new technology by, by my Microsoft. It's the new ASP.NET, so the new... It's actually a new web RP client stuff, but um, uh, you can also use it for not web stuff. You can just... I mean, you can create a website with it, or you can create a. You can use that to like. You you can always just wrap a, a, a web client or a website into a local um, executable application. Um, but Blazor is also providing options to immediately do that. It will also always render in HTML, but um, so it's going to use a web view. But yeah, you can create a local client with it. It doesn't have to be a, a web service, um, and. Uh, that's new and fresh and fancy and looks cool and I want to try it. And I think it's all, I, I'm actually pretty up, up, um, prom, um, I'm pretty optimistic that it's going to be the future, not for games, but it's going to be the future for, for a lot of business applications. Um, so it's relevant for my job as well. Um, and I, I want to see if it's, if it's viable for games, because I think it might be at least for simple, like for graphically wise, simple stuff. Um, you can do 3D in the browser. But it's, yeah, it's 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 a little complicated, I think. But you can do 2D fairly well. And um, so, yeah, I want to try that, uh, at least for the prototype. And then we're going to add more stuff and play around with it and see what is fun and what works and what not. And then there will be more steps and more work to do. And at some point, I'm going to decide what to actually do. Like, what game, what kind of game do I want to make? Do I want to make the spaceship game or I'm just going to do the idle or the, effect, uh, the, the puzzle game? And when that decision is made, I'm going to decide eventually on the engine. Um, so some ideas are to just stick with Blazor, if it works, um, or use Unity, obviously, which is the obvious choice. Or I heard about this or read a little bit about this Go um, engine. I, if I remember correctly, it can do C-sharp. Let's check that really quick. Um, uh, it seems to be a cool open source, um, simple I I engine, a simple open source engine. Like it's not going to, I think it's simpler um, it might be better than Unity in some regards. Um, probably less powerful, but uh, it might be easier to do. I, if I remember correctly, it can do C sharp. If not, it's gonna be it's not gonna be an option. Like I'm, I want to program in C sharp. It's just my most preferred language. C sharp seven. Okay, not eight, but C sharp seven. So they're probably eventually gonna switch to eight as well. And maybe there are some some plugins or something where you can upgrade to eight as well. Like that's I remember when I fiddled around with Unity, um, it didn't use the latest C sharp version either. But you could install some plugins that basically built the bridge and allowed you to use the newest C sharp um, features. So, um, so yeah, it it can be can do C sharp, which um, yeah is is what I want to do. 
um, because I, I think C-sharp is a very, very, very good language in a lot of regards. It has some downsides, it has some some bad things, but all, all languages have bad things. And I think C-sharp is, is one of the strongest contenders out there, in my opinion. Um, so, and it's the one I'm, I'm most familiar with. So, yeah. Um, and I want to use .NET Blazor, so <laughs> I'm gonna gonna be bound to uh, C Sharp anyway. Well, I guess in theory I could do Visual Basic and do not the .NET Blazor or C plus plus actually. I think that yeah, C plus plus runs on .NET Framework as well, so I guess that would work. But I'm not gonna touch C plus plus with the ten pole stick, so um, not gonna be a thing. So lots of talk. Um, Let's get started, I think, maybe. I don't know, I'm a little scared. <laughs> I'm not sure how this, go how this is gonna go. Mm. That's why I'm hesitating. Um, I'm, I, I didn't plan any of this and we might just sit here and um, I don't know. I'm usually, I'm usually good with coming up with ideas when it comes to code. So it's probably gonna be fine, but I don't know. It might be horrible. And I don't know if it's going to be an entertaining stream. I, I can't promise that, but it's an experiment. So um, let's actually go here. So yeah, I'm going to use, because that's just what I want, like to do. I'm going to use the newest shit, um, preview stuff and whatever. Well, actually, not preview, right? No, no, necessarily, actually. I'm think well, if I go to Blazor, that's going to be preview. Um, but um, I'm going to use .NET Core 3.1, which is the actually the, act the current um, long-term support version of .NET, so that's not actually preview at all, but it's the newest shit, so definitely want to use C Sharp 8, um, want to use live unit testing of Visual Studio 19, um, so I want to use all the good good stuff, um, because I just like new shiny things, it's, <laughs> it's not necessarily productive, well, probably, I don't know, I just like if things are cool and optimized and, and work well together and, and stuff like that, and are easy and and improved and get better. Um, so that's what I do. So let's do a new solution. Eh. Wait, what? <laughs> I usually don't do it this way, so I'm confused. Why is there, there used to be a new solution button. Is repository the new word for it? Why, why would you call it repository? Project? Oh yeah, you have to go project and it will create a solution. Oh yeah, or that's, that's, that's a little unintuitive, to be honest. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do C sharp, uh, all platforms, sure. Um, console app, cons library. There we go. Cla .NET standard. Yeah, we're gonna go .NET standard, so it runs on everything basically. Um, I could go .NET Core, I guess. There's no real reason to do so though. What? Where is it? .NET Class library, no, there's no .NET Core class library. Oh, there. I could go .NET Core, but I don't think there is a huge advantage over .NET Standard. So I'm just going to go with Standard. So if I decide to do, I don't know, something weird, I can do that later on. Um, I don't think .NET Standard is that important anymore because the, uh, Microsoft decided to just push everything on, on .NET Core anyway, which is going to be renamed .NET in version 5. So it's just going to be .NET at that point, and they scratch the old .NET framework. And um, so, yeah, probably .NET standard is not going to be as important anymore. But uh, well, I guess it's still important for stuff like Mono and things like that. Oh, which is actually important because let's pull that up again. Um, it said Mono, right? Wait, where, where was it? Where did I see that? C sharp, there we go. It said using mono. Um, how is it about mono and, wait, let me check that really quick. Mono.net standard. That actually, comp I think that's compatible, right? Should be, should be. That's not two with mono, compatibility, wait, there, .net standard, mono. So we are using the community by asking Stack Overflow. Uh, .NET Standard 2.0 apparently. They say .NET Standard 
2.1 is actually the current. Yeah, okay, so Mono seems to be very compatible um, with, with .NET standard. So that's a reason to stick to standard so I can switch to Godot if I want to. Um, also, I think for Xamarin, that's... How is it? Like, Xamarin is not running on .NET Core, right? That's its own thing. So yeah, if I want to ever go Xamarin for mobile stuff, then... Um, and that might be important as well. Yeah, .NET standard is the way to go. I'm not sure why it's not saying Xamarin forms here. Well, I don't know. I don't know about Xamarin that much, so I don't know. So yeah, .NET standard seems to be the right choice. So let's go with that. Um, .NET class, .NET standard class library. Next, project name, Pionectory. Silly name. Do I do it in, in sys repos? Yeah, why not? Let's put it there. Place solution and project in the same directory. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Solution pyronectory, project pyronectory. Perfect. Okay, so first things first. Uh, you can actually, see, you can't see that, right? Well, doesn't matter too much. It's gonna be quick. Create a uh, git repository here please go go um it's gonna be local for the moment I'm gonna put it on on my gitlab now what do i have i don't know it's not gitlab what's the one the name git it's not github it's or not gitlab it's the other one bitbucket right i'm gonna put it on bitbucket eventually probably um it's actually should be config, right? Yeah, okay, you can't see that, but it doesn't show you. It doesn't show you, that's a little unfortunate, but mm, can I wait? Can I tell it to do that somehow? Wait, give me a second. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try something at window view. Where is it? Window capture, uh, call it Tor. Voice git. Could work with different windows. Enter it on. Oh. Oh, how can I say to center it? To Enter to screen, there we go. Good. Now uh, there's the git. Um, let's see if that works as I would expect it to. Uh, kind of. <laughs> um, guess we don't center it, but put it in. Put it on the left corner uh, this okay yeah it shows on a different location on the stream not then for me but that's fine you can see the window whichever one shows up so that one yeah perfect okay cool that works that's that's neat so it, it captures all Altered skid window. So that's the, the git software I use. And uh, if you take a look here, the first thing that shows up is we need an, uh, an ignore, a git ignore file. Um, so I'm just gonna steal the one. Um, yeah, there's a good one. Visual or git ignore or a visual studio. Uh, one or this one so this is the okay so this is visual studio um providing a git ignore file but that's probably managed by microsoft and that's just as a that's just a repo the other one is probably better that's uh wait that's not what i want to do 
Let's go to no 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 don't, let's not go to GitHub. Let's go to Git Ignore. What is this? Is this some sort of project who's maintaining this? This is GitHub's collection of Git Ignore file templates. Oh, it's officially GitHub. Interesting. Which is also Microsoft because they bought GitHub a few months ago. <laughs> um and what is this? This is just a Visual Studio. Oh, is that just a git ignore? Is that just this file? Oh yeah, it's just it's just the, the file they use. Wait, wait, wait. Which repository is this actually? Is this the code of Visual Studio? It shouldn't be, right? GitHub extension for Visual Studio. Okay. No, no. Okay, so this one is the good one. Um no, no, it's not the good one. Wait, wait. GitHub. Oh, it might be the good one. Wait. This one should be there. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So I'm going to take that. Um, do I download it? Do I just copy paste it? Paste it. I think it's the easiest to do it. Okay, um, create a new file. You can't see this right now, but it's fine. It's gonna be quick. Uh, Wait, what was the trick to rename the, name the thing? Um, I can just do save as, I think. Save as. Or. No, we need that one. Okay. So, well, refresh. There we go, that's better. That's better. Let's just check this in. Initial commit. Nope, you can't push. You don't have a you don't have an origin. Okay, so so far so good. Um project setup done, kind of. Very basic project setup done. But we're done. Is there a hotkey for the transition button? Not now. Let me take a sip. Okay, so where to go? I'm not sure. <laughs> As I said, I didn't think about this beforehand, so I'm just going to think about it now. And I have to, I have the, 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 like when I'm streaming, there is the, what's the word? Like, it makes you talk. Like, streaming, or at least makes me talk. Trying to talk all the time. And when I'm talking, I'm not that good at thinking. So, um, I want to start with a few interfaces. Let's, let's just start with that and see where it goes. So, I'm, I think I'm even going to start with a folder first. A uh, new folder just call it interface it's probably going to be renamed like imagine like probably every line of code and everything we do right now is going to be scrapped later and changed because that's how i operate and that's actually how most software is developed but um it's how i operate very specifically like i'm just going to throw stuff in here and later realize oh no that's dumb let's do it or there's a better way to do this so let's do that new item interface and we're going to start with a tile. Oh, I just realized this is really small, right? Can you actually read this properly? Probably not. Um, I should probably increase the font size or zoom in or something. Zoom in some size. seems good. Uh, what is good? 146? 161? 177? What, what is, like, give me some feedback. I'm not sure what's good. Um, especially if you're on a smaller screen. Thing 146 might be good. I mean, the smaller I can make it, the better for me, but 
I want it to be visible on the screen. So actually, can you properly? This is really small as well, right? Probably be bigger. It's actually helping. Yeah, that's helping. So I'm just going to go with 146 for now. Okay, Bangladesh says that 140 to 160 should be fine. Okay, let's go with 146 and see if that's good. If anyone has some feedback, like is it too small? Can it be smaller? Um, just throw it out there. Let's delete that class one. Nobody needs a class one. Class one is the worst. Um, so a tile. So the tile, the tile, like the thing is going to be 2D top down, right? So a tile, and it's going to be grid based. So a tile is one tile of the grid. Um, I'm not sure I want to put anything in here yet because I'm not sure what should be in there. Um, coordinations, uh, coordinates, yeah, maybe, but maybe not actually. I'm not sure if the tile should know its own coordination, uh, coordinates. We're gonna decide on that yet later. Um, so I'm just gonna keep that empty for a the moment. There will be stuff in here, obviously, but not right now. Let's put another one in. No, not a class. Well, okay. The face. Um, okay, Bangla says that 120 is readable at 720p. Uh, maybe I go down to 120 then. Um, so what what interface do I want to go on the next? Um, let's let's you do. Um, I can't we. I was thinking about this earlier actually, while I was preparing food. Um, I was thinking about a name. Um, I want to do the like the interface for the things that are the factory. So conveyor belts, pushers, welders, spawners, rotators, the kind of stuff you place. And I was thinking about building first, but that's wrong. Um, I was thinking about structures. And I like structures, but structures is, I'm not sure if I like, like the name in general, is, it describes it well, I think, but it, it's just not a good name for the thing in a program because there's the thing that's called struct and that's a programming term, term and calling the thing structure, well, actually struct is just short for structure. And that, that could be confusing, but for the lack of a better name, Right now, I'm going to call this a structure. Let's go to 120. Yeah, 120 seems fine. Is that the right font? What? It's easy to see. Yeah, it is the right font. Because I have this fancy cool thingy, um, like I can do arrows. And I can do this. No, not that. Yes, there we go. And and this, which is really cool. I think this, yeah. Um, what's it called? Ligatures or something? It's a it's a font feature actually. Like the font, like well, it needs to be part of the font. Like the font has to provide it, and the IDE has to have a feature for it. But most modern IDEs have have this feature, and you have to. Just have to enable it, and this this one is really good to read. Anyway, it's a déjà vu, I think, the name. Um, I like it quite a bit. It's good. It's good, in my opinion. Anyways, um, that's obviously very very subjective. Like everyone likes different things in this regard. So, yeah, a structure. So the structure, the structure is um, what can we say about a structure already? Not not much probably. Um, like a structure could be on a tile. That's probably something I want to write in I tile in a moment. Um, besides that, the structure is going to do something. It's going to be have a. It's probably going to have a size. It's it could be bigger than one tile, potentially. I'm not sure yet, but at least a thing like a like a like a consumer, like that actually takes the the finished product is probably going to be bigger than a, than a than one tile because it has to take a product that's bigger one, than one tile. Like the product should be like, that's what I mentioned earlier. I want to weld things together. I want to go infinite factory style of factories, not factorial style of factories. 
So I want to put things together so they will be bigger than one tile because the simples or the smallest parts would be one tile. So it's quite likely that structures might be bigger than one tile as well. Um, maybe not the, the basics ones, but at least like a, a consumer, maybe a, a spawner, um, maybe something else, who knows, I don't know. So um, I don't want to restrict it to one tile. Um, I'm not sure how to set that up yet. So let's not write that down. What else could I say about it? Not much right now. Um, so I think we keep it on like that. Uh, Bangladesh proposes block for an alternate name or machine, device, placeable, buildable. Mm, I guess interface names that are like um, adjectives is actually usually a good pattern. It's like calling it placeable or something. I don't know. Block. I don't know, like block much. That's too generic. Machine, yeah, I was thinking about that as well, but I want to, I probably want to say that the whole thing is going to be the machine. So, like, I'm not even sure we're going to stick with that. Maybe we we just do behavioral, behavior like interfaces later anyway, like placeable and, and, and whatever. Um, well, let's keep the die structure for the moment. Um, uh, stick with it for the moment. And, um, so an I tile can have structure structures on it probably right how would they be connected if a structure can be multiple tiles big how would you you would probably you would probably that's probably not something the tile knows to be honest tile probably doesn't know well, maybe the tile knows what is on top of it i don't know yet so no probably yeah Probably it can have a stru multiple structure. Probably the structure will have like one anchor point. Like if it's bigger than bigger than one tile, it's probably gonna have one anchor point, and that's gonna be a tile. And I can tell that tile this structure is anchored to you. And other tiles can have like methods that say, yeah, I'm I'm the the, the structure is actually overlapping to me. But yeah, so let's say a tile has structures. Um, well. My structure, structures, get, yeah. uh, actually, probably not inrubles or but a collection, rather, because I want to, hmm, that's the question now, I could say this is, um, I could go, I was thinking about, like, yeah, I would probably want to add things to the tile, and then I need a modifiable collection. I could also try to do a more functional programming approach where things are usually stateless. So you try to keep them read-only where possible. So that might be worthwhile. So that's actually, you cannot actually change it. In order to change it, you need to create a new one. Not sure that's a good idea. We'll see. Let's let's do Iron Rumble, and if I feel I need to, no, I'm definitely gonna need in my first iteration need to add stuff. Well, let's keep Iron Rumble and see if I can do it without, and see if that actually leads to better code or not. Yeah, Bangladesh proposes a hash set of tiles. Yeah, I mean I could go with I uh, I said I guess, but. Does that make sense? More than iron removal? Yeah, probably, because I can't, like, a tile cannot have the same structure twice. That makes sense. It could have potentially multiple structures. Like, I don't want to prevent that. Um, probably, like, there are probably structures that block the tile, but there might be structures, like, we, we, we have to keep, like, if you inf think in Infinity Factory, every tile is, uh, can only hold one structure or one thing in general, but um, we're 2D here. So we're a little bit more limited. So we probably want to have structures that can be placed on top of other structures. Like maybe a sensor can be placed at the same tile as a conveyor or something. So um, definitely want to keep that more flexible. Yeah, room contains a hash set of tiles, correct. So I'm not sure if I want to call that room or machine or factory. 
but yeah, we, we need an, a, a set of tiles. Um, so, but we're gonna get to that later. I'm just gonna fill those in uh, eventually. Um, I'm just gonna keep it very simple and then think about what I need later. So, um, not I said, um, the next one I want is like a thing that can be moved on the factory. So a resource or an item. I'm gonna call it resource, I think. I always forget it's resource spelled with two R or one R. <laughs> can't I can't remember it because I think it's different in German and English. So in English it's it is, re, is it resource or resources. In English it is one S. And I think Ressourcen im Deutschen im Deutschen in German is actually two S. Yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. So that's why it's confusing to me, but it's one S in English, okay. It's the other way around than address, because address in English is two S, and adresse in German is, actually, also, no, wait, not S. <laughs> address is also two S, but it's only one D, and address is two D in English. Um, I resource, and resource, well, I don't know, can do things, probably. Oh, yeah. But uh, a tile can have resources. Certainly. Probably only one, to be honest. Do I want to limit that right now? To only one resource? I don't think resources should go on top of each other. I would very much clash with the idea of having it having the mechanics be somewhat similar to Infinity Factory. So let's keep it to one. Is there an I read only set, by the way? I don't think so, actually. No. Maybe I write one. Be fairly simple. Uh, so this has to be wait, wait. I forgot an important part. I mentioned I want to use cutting edge technology, and the new groundbreaking feature of C sharp eight is nullable reference types. Uh what was the trick to enable it? Um, wait, C sharp. Nullable reference reference types enable. Uh, I think I have to go actually in the solution file or something. Nullable context enable. Yeah, I have to put it into the solution, I think. Or in a project, probably project wide. Yeah, CS product. Okay. So I have to actually, can I do this from here? I think they added a button for that, right? Edit project file, there we go. Go. Um, we haven't got an issue at all. I think I just tried to file. Why does it, why, why does it not like it? Beneath. Okay, I guess I put it on the wrong thing. Can I edit? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Does it have to be in property group? What does the doku say? Null but element in your CS Poi file. Does it become harder? Or is .NET standard? No, .NET standard can't do this, right? Eh? Eh, what am I doing wrong? Not done in standard compatible. It has to be in property group, okay.
Yeah, enabled, not true. Or enable? Enable, I think. Enable. Reload. Because nullable reference types are the shit. Oh, why does it not... Can we... Wait, hunt the... No, 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 don't do that. I want the... That's a new feature as well. I use that on work, on, uh, at work. Why is this not actually... Yeah, I want the, the tab, tab layout left. There we go. I want that. That's cool. It gives more vertical space and allows for more, more tabs at the same time. So this is really cool because it will now complain everywhere. Actually, it's probably not com going to complain in the interface. It might be. No, it doesn't complain because I didn't set it up, but I can now say this is nullable. No? Why am I on C sharp 7.3? What's going on with that shit? Dude. Don't find the standard 2.1, please. And what language are we using? No, wait, that's not helping. Is that, is that better? That's better. There we go. Which C sharp version is two point in two point one? Um on that standard C sharp version. Yeah, I'm gonna use C sharp eight. Yeah, you can just like I'm just gonna keep it on the default language. But yeah, I could do it manually with the language and write correct. But what is the default for two point one? Is that uh, sharp. Wait, why is this link? This link is wrong. It's a default. Default C sharp version. There we go. Eight one. Yeah, and three is using eight as well. Uh, eight eight zero. We don't have eight one yet, right? Eight one is eight one released? I'm not sure actually. C sharp release. Uh, release notes. I think we're on eight zero right now. Actually, I think there's no official thing for that. We have okay. We can do something else. We can say eight point one release date. Remove from GitHub, yeah. And yeah, there's no planned version for it right now, I think. So 8.0 is the 8 is the current version. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. So now we have C Sharp 8 features here, so that's nice. With nullable reference types, which is the shit. Nullable reference types are a big paradigm shift, in my opinion. And they're really, really great. Basically, they allow you to tell the compiler this can be null and this can't, and it's not going to be change any change anything at runtime. But basically, it allows the compiler to warn you if you try to put it to set the uh, to set it to null. So that's very useful. Okay, where to go from here? Um, I'm actually not sure. <laughs> Uh, buh, buh, buh. what do we have? We have a tile now, which now is a resource and a structure or multiple structures potentially. Um, we probably need a, a factory now. So, new item. I factory. Which probably now is a bunch of tiles. Now the question arrives: Do I want? to have the factory know which tile is in which position, or do I want the tiles to know in which position they are? Uh, so either I tell the factory, here you have an, a two-dimensional, a 2D array of tiles, um, or I tell the factory, here you have a set of tiles, and I tell the tiles you're in coordinate X and Y. 
X and Y, which probably the worst approach feel because uh, it's harder to coordinate that you don't get duplicates and stuff like that. And it makes sense to have like an overview in, in the factory. So I'm, I'm going to go with, I don't really want to restrict myself to a 2D array at this point though. Um, hmm. Not sure. Maybe I write a own class for it or something. Okay, Bangles is um, asking um, if I have a concept of power, like why is the power supply? Not yet. Um, I probably, maybe? It depends. Like, it also depends in which direction I'm gonna go eventually. If I'm gonna go for the spaceship game, maybe that's a good idea. Um, but if I'm gonna go more puzzles than Infinite Factory, then probably not. I rather will I will rather use cables and wires and stuff for um for for having logic like a sensor with a pusher connected with a wire 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 or wire wire or wire <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. So um I think I want to have an extra layer here. I think I want one interface that actually holds the tiles like something that just holds the tiles and can and and provides methods of interacting with the tiles and then i want an interface that wraps that tile collection and operates as the entry points into the game logic so the factory is the thing probably that i can start up uh, or stop or no, whatever and the the then i needed something in between so probably want an interface called tile collection or maybe i call it machine that's very confusing i have a factory and a machine that's confusing so i think i'm going to call it a tile collection it sounds wrong as well though mm. Oh, you actually don't see that window. Interesting. It's a pop-up window of Visual Studio. It should show up, but it doesn't, apparently. Do I grab a tile collection? Let's go with tile collection for a moment. Seems very technical, but it is what it is. So it will have... What will it have? It certainly will have a nice set of eye tiles. Um <laughs> that's that's wrong. <laughs> there we go. Um it definitely needs uh a, a method to get those tiles. Uh, the coordinates of a tile. So, um, do we do that with an indexer, or do I write a method? Does it work with an indexer? Let's try. I want to see how that looks. Um, what's the syntax for indexer? I always forget. I write them so rarely. C sharp indexer. Thinking about an indexer with an in, in coordination coordinate tuple. That would be fun. But probably I want to encapsulate coordinates eventually. But right now it should be fine. T this. So public. I don't need to. It's an interface. Wait, can I even in, um? Can I even define an indexer on an interface? Well, we're gonna find out. Uh, so. We're Does this work? Seems to work. 
Okay, cool. Now, can I actually use this now? This. Uh. Yeah, it seems to work. That's cool. That's kind of cool. That's that's kind of cool. I'm not sure if that's actually useful, but it's kind of cool. I uh, we'll probably want to replace this with an actual class eventually or interface, but not right now. So Bunglist writes, maybe a room affected with a two-dimensional array of tiles so you can look minus one and plus one for left and right. Same for up and down with some boundary stacks. Yeah, yeah, I'm probably going to do that in the implementation implementation of iTile collection, but I don't think that's necessarily part of the interface. Maybe, want to know. But actually, probably you're right because I want to, I want to check neighbors and stuff. How would I do that? So I have an I I have a tile collection and I want to I want to check I have one tile and I want to check neighbors. I want to see what is the tile right to the right of this one. So I mean I can just go with another indexer. I think I can write multiple indexers, right? I think I, th I think never tried. Um, probably. <laughs> Probably. No, it doesn't like it. Wait, yeah, wait, I did. No, 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 not, not with the tuple. That, that's dumb. But with a double indexer. No, it doesn't, doesn't like that. Cannot contain instance fields. Why is this not legal? Turn type this, racers. Why is this not legal? Why well, I cannot do a double indexer? Okay, can do a tuple, right? Can do a double indexer, or do you do that differently? Maybe. And that works. Does it also work? Get that back in. Yeah. Okay. How do you do a a, a, a double indexer or multiple dim two dimensional indexer? Uh. Explain here. Oh, sharp to the indexer. Multidimensional indexers. Oh, with the comment. Okay. So just remove the tuple shit and we're good. Ah. Okay. Well, that's weird. That's weird for sure. Oh, you actually call it that way? Wait, what? Interesting. Oh, wait, yeah, wait. Do I confuse my syntax right now? I think I'm confused. I never use array, so I barely use indexers. Is that how you do an array in C-sharp as well? 
I shouldn't know. I, I'm programming in C Sharp for four years now, four and a half. And I did lots of Java before that. So um, I should know. But apparently I never use this. No, actually, that's just a regular syntax. I thought you do. Is it Java where you do the double braces? Yeah, okay, so that's actually a syntax difference. Oh, that's why I got confused. Okay, so in C sharp you do it with commata, but in Java you do it with double braces. Okay, not braces, bra brackets, brackets, double brackets. That's why I got it confused. Okay. Um, this should work. I should actually probably provide an index for a tuple as well though, because, well, can you do it? Wait, can you, can you, can you, can you deconstruct here? Can you do that? No. No, it can't, it can't do that, okay. So this will work, but it cannot deconstruct a tuple, tuple, tuple. So I probably would want one with the, with the tuple as well. Is it tuple in English? How do you pronounce that? It's tuple in German. What is, what is it in English? I have no idea. Tuple. Tuple, really, tuple. Okay, that sounds weird. It was Rip headphone users, by the way, probably. Sorry. Tuple? Really? That's weird. Uh, it doesn't like that, though. Why not? Oh, because there's the... The thingy missing. Um, interesting. But here's the thing. I probably don't want to run... I probably don't want to have coordinates being integer tuples. That's probably a dumb idea. Like it's not, no, not a dumb idea, but it probably can be done better because integers are actually not a good type for it. And it's pro even, pro and, and the tuple is probably too simple as well. Um, and it doesn't show intent either. So probably having a coordinate class or interface is probably a good, or struct rather. It's probably a good idea. Interface first and then by a struct, with a struct. Probably good, I think. So yes, let's do that really quick. I coordinate. Coordinates? Coordinates, right? Can you say that in singular? Probably not. Uh, cool. Co coordinate. Is that is there a singular of this? There is. But is the singular only one of them now? P probably. Apparently not the only one asking that. Like is a combination of two values coordinates or is it one coordinate? Let's say even another term maybe. Coordinate on three axes, x, y, z, or if it's time, each row is a coordinate, but rows are coordinates. On a line, each number is a coordinate, each row has three coordinates. Okay. So this should be co I coordinates, I think. Well, I mean, I could go crazy and also write an I coordinate class and have co I coordinates be or interface and have coordinates be a combination of multiple coordinates. <laughs> well, that's probably too much. So actually, is it? Is it though? Is it really? Uh... It might work without. Oh shit, I can't do an interface here if I want to. No, 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 I can't do interface here for this. This has to be a struct, I think. If I do an interface, I can't define, um, can't define uh, uh, b -b 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 operators. 
I probably want that. I did that in a in a different project where I had like a, a, a type player numbers or player number or number of players or something like a player count. I think I called it. So it's it's a number of players available. It's it had um, it's basically an int, but it cannot be negative. So it's an unsigned int, I guess. But um, I, I wrote a different a single a class for it to show intent and or struct. I think did I do a class or a struct? I'm not sure. Um, and I think I can't define operators on an interface. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Interface. Because operators do not actually work with polymorphy in general. Um, so you can't inherit from it and stuff like that. Operators have to be static, yeah. But if you apply to instances, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't work. Uh, in C Sharp, you can define local methods and interfaces and within the interfaces. Yeah, I know, but does this help? Oh, you can. Oh, 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 you can actually do this in C Sharp, right? Ooh. Let's check. What what does it do? Uh, I can add interface. Public set again. You you can actually. You can actually do this now. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so he has an add, which is an I can add. And now he has two plus one. Cool. Oh, that's good. And that works. That work. That's way better than doing it on structs in general, right? Because it actually works as polymorphism then. Hmm. That's good. Oh, I'm not logged in here. Why I'm not logged in? Oh, I got I got ten reputation. Oh, for that one. It's my most prominent answer in Stack Overflow. Uh and it's not even the accepted one. The accepted one has two, right? Even has even more. <laughs> it's not even a really interesting answer. It's just like, oh, you can also do this. <laughs> Stack Overflow is weird. Bungle says, if you were really going overboard, you have started an enterprise architect. What is enterprise architect? Is that like a thing to design the software? Enterprise. Oh, I didn't switch. Sorry, I didn't switch screens. You didn't saw any of that. Okay, I'm going to show you. I was I was looking at this. So you can apparently put a um, you can apparently put a operator on interface now in C sharp eight. So it just actually works. Like you you define an interface, you define an operator with int, and you define a class that integrates that or implements that interface, and you, you, then you can actually have a variable of that interface and plus it with one, which is pretty amazing because that means it just works, um, and you can have polymorphism with it. So that's actually really really cool. I wasn't aware of that. That's actually really really good. That makes operators actually useful, because before that you could put them on 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 structs or classes, but they were bound to that specific class and yeah so that like that thing well design construct test deploy manage oh, okay yeah that seems ah, that looks really old school though holy shit look at those interfaces that looks very much windows 95 style so um and i i got that notification that i got an upload that's what i was rambling about earlier which is this answer which just says yeah you can also do this with local functions which is which got 78 upwards for reasons and it's not even the accepted one which gets even more so <laughs> that's a little silly but i get up points for it on a regular basis um so yeah, but this is actually cool. Like, let's read something about that because I want to, want to, want to see if I understand this correctly. So it's a default interface method. Not really. Kind of, I guess. Operator. 
C sharp to interoperate. No, that's something else. Detailed design. Member declaration that declares constant operation. This next one interface is extended to permit. Yeah, okay, so that's cool. Declaration be permit in an interface will be not conversion operation. Oh, you cannot do conversion. You cannot do, not do conversion equality and inequality? Oh, that's weird. There's probably a good reason for it. Can't think which one though. So I can do an operator, but not an equality operator. That's certainly interesting. And that's something else. That's the other thing. Yep, that's, that's not. So, okay. I mean, let's try that. So. So I can't, no, I can't actually put a conversion operator in here. So that's not actually going to work. Like what I wanted to do is like have like a, a tuple of ints convert to coordinates. But if I can't have conversion, which makes sense. No, you can't have conversion. That, that yeah, you can't because it's an interface. Like what, what class would it be? Um, obviously. So you cannot convert it to an interface because what, what is that? Um, okay, that makes sense. So... Can I actually use that in a meaningful way, or do I have to go with the struct here? If I want to define conversion operators, I have to go with the struct, because if I go with an interface, I can have multiple implementations, and then the operator fails. So, I mean, I could still go with both, really, but it's going to be a pain to use the interface. So, I'd rather not. So I could say fuck operators and do it just with methods and whatnot. But I'm not sure I want to do that. I mean, I could just go with ints for the moment and postpone that problem to later and do something like this. That would work. I'm thinking way too much about this, right? <laughs> that's that's how I operate, though. This is just how I work. This is how I do things. Um, it's I, that's how I'm like. I could do it fast and quick and dirty, but that's not what I enjoy doing. I could do that, but I, I would get burned out and bored after a while. So I rather just spend the time on thinking on these things because I enjoy thinking about these. And um, therefore, I should do it because if I don't do the things I enjoy, I'm going to stop doing it. And the goal is to not actually stop. So, yeah. So, coordinates. I don't know. I have too, too few experience. Not enough experience with this shit. Um, so, if I do an interface, I cannot do conversion, which would be horrible. That would be horrible. I want to write um, coordinate 5, 4 or something. So, I need a conversion from int. So I cannot go interface, at least not for the, for the thing. I, I mean, I coordinates could be an interface that uh, wraps two, two um, smaller parts, like the two single coordinates, um, which then could be a struct. Um, I'm not sure that's a good idea, though. That, is that is that helping in any any regard way? Uh, 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 uh. So I could either write it. Wait. Let's try struct and see how it goes.
So Bangles asks if I want to each tile to know about every other tile or just its neighbors. I'm I'm not sure if I want the tiles to know about any other tile in the first place. I want to be able to like I want the factory to know. Or or the tile collection rather. But I'm not sure I want the tiles to know. Probably gonna be useful. Yeah, you probably want that eventually. Gonna think about that when I need it, to be honest. Does not match file name. Uh, thank you. Um, change that maybe later. So, if I have a struct that actually has to int private. Sharp, the sharp con conversion operator. Can I do this the way I imagine it right now? Let's see, what do I need for a conversion operator? Public static implicit operator. Uh, by um, what is what here? It's from, okay, that's the goal. So that should be int, oops, oops, uh, y, and then digit, Nate, let's see, and then x, c, y. That actually works. That's that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, how do you, how do you do facts? Uh, wait, what sticks over here? Don't have a constructor for this. Did they change that? Did it just put the constructor below the fields? Oh no, it's because of the private. Yeah, okay, never mind. Never mind. Not working because. That's not too bad. Um, this also my structures want to look left, right, or like everywhere. Eventually, pr probably everywhere, like just left and right and up and down seems to be too limited. It's going to be the most, most common use case, but it seems to be too limited. I think I'm going to try this. This doesn't seem too bad. Let's test that really quick. Class test. Why, why do I can just do static white test. Blech. Um, so Coordinates. Yeah. Cool. That's actually cool. I like that. 
What we also can do, I learned today, this. It's also pretty cool. Uh, uh, well, actually, you know what? I like properties more anyway. This is actually pretty neat. I wonder if I should replace this int with something else as well. So what, because what I can do now is, um, what I can do now is I can check here if x is lower zero or y is lower zero. Well, do it properly. Don't be lazy. So what I can do now is this. And that's kind of cool. I'm not actually sure that's I should do that. Maybe, probably, I don't know. It might be situations where you want negative uh, coordinates, especially if you want to well, you could do that with a different class, like point like point up or down or something like say uh three up and two left or something could be something like minus three minus two. Well, minus two minus three rather. But you could do that with a different class. So this is not too bad because this now guarantees that X and Y will always be zero or higher. It also shows intent by being named coordinates, but you can still simply use it like this, which is pretty amazing because that actually means if I have a tile collection that has an indexer on coordinates, let's actually put that in really quick. Well, let's rename that. Yeah. Let's actually turn this out. Clean that up. Um, because what I can do now is I can now this be coordinate and then have an indexer on on that class. And the cool thing now is that this actually still works. Like you can still do this because this is a tuple, uh, a tuple of ints which has a conversion operator uh, to coordinates here. So this still works. I put the coordinates in here and the collection recognizes that as coordinate or the tuple in here which is, gets converted to coordinates which then returns the tile. So that looks like a neat solution. What I don't like is that this is not an interface, but you can't do conversion with an interface. So I don't see a much better way to do that. Instead, you could obviously go interface and methods, but operators are so convenient. The question in my mind right now is, should I replace this int with something else? With the coordinate? Is that better? What I'm also thinking is, can we somehow, can we somehow combine combine this with the new range feature in C sharp? Still thinking way too much about the simple stuff. But then again, then again, like this is the groundwork. This is absolute. Like this is going to be like coordinates will be a very very important thing in the software, like in the game, uh, or in the code rather. Um, coordinates will be super important. They will be everywhere in the code base. So getting them right is probably worth while. So what was that? C sharp range. Can we somehow abuse or not abuse, but can we somehow use that in a reasonable way? You can define your own range and operator and stuff, right? Right? That's uh, a bad article. Range struct, ranges and indices. Uh, 
or not like how, how did that work? wait how does this work you can you can you can put your give your class the ability to understand this i think you do it by yeah you do it by by writing an index so right so i can do like ooh 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 i can do ooh wait i can do something like um i set i tile this range uh, how does the range class work? Correct. Range. Two ranges, probably. Range X. Range Y. Oh my. It's not installed here. My macro doesn't work. And now broke this one because he because he doesn't know what to do. Collection maybe. No wait, I, yeah, never mind. Um, so I can can do something like uh. Ooh, <laughs> I don't even have to do anything for that. Well, I have to put in this indexer. So that actually works. That's kind of cool. Can I combine this? Can I do something useful here with it? Really? Can I somehow like, is there a way to define a range with something else? No, a range is always a range is always uh made up of two of two index or indices, right? And an index is is just a, a yeah, it's equitable to in to index. It's equitable to in or it's convertible to int. There we go. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I can't really fiddle with that. I probably don't have to. Oh, you're still looking at the browser. Sorry, fuck. I should. There are auto. You can wait. Is that? I should set up something where it auto switches. Can OBS do that natively? Now you're looking at the thing again, but well, that's probably more interesting anyway. Auto switching. Isn't auto? Do you do that? You set that up. Advanced scene switcher. That. Yeah, that's a plugin. Oh, yeah, I don't want to switch scenes. Actually, I would rather switch sources. Yeah, Rico says, or Jules, Rico says, last time he checked, it can't. So there are plugins for that. Can I just, can I, wait, can I tell, um, oh no, switch scenes makes sense, yeah. Can I tell a view to not show if the window is not focused? Yes, only show capture or source if window not minimized. Yeah, how to set window height when minimized. Probably doesn't. Uh, 
hide source on minimize hiding sources yeah oh sorry there are plugins i guess all right the automatically hiding going blank mechanic works fine which which how do you do that I mean, I could just do screen capturing, but I don't really want to. Okay, I don't know. Doesn't seem to be an easy way. Well, I could look into it, but I'm not going to do that now live. Be on screen. Yeah, stream. If I can. Because, like, minimizing the window doesn't change the source now. An easy way to do it no i don't think so so probably with the scene switcher that will work um i have to look into that but for now you're gonna stick with this um so i'm just gonna have to do it manually should probably at least define a hotkey for switching the scene mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. so this actually works um no and this not this one this one actually works this is kind of cool um, I should probably have, not have this I said, but have like a class that is, or like, is that another tile collection, maybe? Probably gives back another tile collection, right? Like it's a sub-collection. I assume. Did I type it wrong? Oh no. To have this in here. I can do something like that, which is kind of cool. Kind of fancy. So the question is, should I replace int here with something else, like with the coordinate struct? Uh, what would I gain from that? That if I if I just I just take the x out of the core out of a coordinates thing i i still have a typed thing do i actually ever need that though is that ever useful does it hurt me doing it right now does it cost me anything i i don't see a downside or an upside to it to be honest so I'm a little unsure. Thanks for following Alex Speed 75. I'm a little uncertain on on whether or not that's a good thing or not. I mean, downside is I have another class, but it's gonna be very or struct rather. It's gonna be very simple, similar to this one, just even simpler. Um. Another downside. Can't think of one. I'm gonna put it in here though, not an X it's not gonna get an extra file. Let's do that. I think that's the way to go. Coordinate. I could call this to decoordinates by the way, but that would be out of scope. <laughs> Because the game's not going to be 3D. So, private int coordinate. Get. And have C door. Yeah, for properties, it does it the wrong way. Ah, I hate this. I hate this. Uh, oh, yeah, I can't, I can't call it that. Uh, uh, value. 
doesn't really matter. So, and then we need operators, conversion operators as well. They're not going to do a tuple, a tuple. they're just going to be like this. this right yeah and now I can actually make this coordinate this is not gonna this actually works Ooh, because it converts that to an int it's fancy we don't need that anymore though because these things cannot be smaller than zero so that still works. Just have to assign it. And now we can replace it here as well. And here. And everything should still work fine. Yep. That's cool. That's very cool. I like this kind of shit. Like, <laughs> I like writing neat classes that do cool things in cool ways, or simple things in cool ways, rather. Um, I don't know. I enjoy this kind of stuff. Um, I think it's rather boring to watch, to be honest, but I like building shit like this. So, yeah, I can, I can still do this. I can still say collection, wanted to... Comment to one to two and get a sub collection. So these are ints, but they're actually not. They get converted to coordinate and then the range. No, not the range. The range actually doesn't. Uh, this is actually not coordinate. This is just in, right? But this one, like these, the two and the three, that will be con converted to coordinate. And then the top, the tuple will be co converted to a coordinates which will then put, be put into this indexer. So that works. This actually doesn't have anything to do with coordinates. But still having the range thing, it's a little weird, but it, it makes sense, I think. Oh, wait, I can maybe write a conversion. Is that helping? I could write conversion from coordinate to index. Probably, 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 I think. Oh, you don't need to because index actually converts to uh, to int, and I have a conversion to int, so should be fine. Oh, Alex says he likes my voice; it's enjoyable. Thanks. <laughs> you could read a phone book and it would be still be sound good. Uh, thanks. Um, that's actually, I'm I'm not a big fan of my voice myself. Uh, it seems to be a little bit like what I've um, uh, what I observed over the years is. It's a little bit, um, what's the word, uh, uh, polarizing. So some people rather enjoy it and some people hate it. <laughs> um, I think it helps that I have like a little, uh, a very, very, very small, um, oh God, words. It's, it's late. I should go to bed soon. Um, like I have in my, my, my sound software, I'm using voice meter banana for my voice stuff for my sound stuff, audio stuff. And I have a little uh, equalizer in place, which, and I have some other, like a, what is in there? Forgot the words so long since I set this up. There is like an equalizer and, uh, and I think an OBS, 
I s like there's a little equalizer and voice banana bananas. That's it. And in OBS, I have like a, I have like a, I think I have some things. Why I have to? I'm back in a second. Give me. A second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Um, so I, I think I have a compressor and a noise gate in my OBS setup somewhere. So where? Where's that? Can be here? Filters. There, yeah. There's a noise gate and a compressor and in, in OBS. And then there is a equalizer in, 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 in voice media banana. Um, and I have a decent mic. It's a USB mic. Don't have a, uh, don't have a mixer thingy. It's called interface, audio interface. But it's, it's for it's one of the better USB mics. The Rode NT, Rode NT. Um, I'm really bad with that sound, that audio stuff. So if I ever find someone who is like really good at that shit and helps me setting like improving those settings and filters, that would be great. But um, um. But yeah, doesn't I, 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 I just try to get it right. I'm pretty sure you could optimize, optimize it and make it sound a little better even, but that's fine. Um, Bangladesh recommends using a deconstructor. Good idea. Good idea. Uh, what is defenestration? Really asks if I use any defenestration. I think it's an audio thing as well. As I said, I'm not good with audio, so I don't know. What is deconstructor so wait how does deconstructor work again so you defined it no wait that's that didn't work there we go um so the deconstructor is a really cool feature in c sharp 7 and you can use it in pattern in pattern matching in c sharp 8 which is great as well uh not pattern matching deconstruction um it's been a while been a while I looked at it. Yeah, that's not an official ones. So yeah, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You put um no wait. Where was it? Where is City Dane? What's that? That's the name of the That's not deconstruction, is it? Oh yeah, okay. He does deconstruction here. No, that's deconstructing a top so tuple. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Oh, that's just the example. Of what? Okay, that's not what you want. Um, but you can do that for your own classes as well. Well, I don't really need to. I convert to like con coordinates already converts to a tuple, and tuples can be deconstructed. I don't really need to write a deconstructor. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm converting to a tuple of coordinates already so i don't need to de deconstruct i already can do the, the cool thing is what i can do now because of that um what um Bunglist wants to do is uh i think um we have coordinates 
Oh wait, it's a struct, I can't set it to null. <laughs> Ugh, default. Um, what you can do now is, um, is this. And now X and Y, oh, he doesn't know what to do, yeah. Um, can now do this, which is neat, you can't. Oh, you can, oh. Oh. Oh, that's unfortunate. So I guess I need a deconstructor. Never mind. So, yeah, he does, like, that's too many steps for him, apparently. He doesn't realize he has to convert that to a tuple and then deconstruct it. Right, well, actually, yeah, to two variables. So that doesn't work because he, he does, yeah, that's too many steps. He can't figure that out, which probably makes sense that he can't. Uh, well, Bunglist wrote more stuff. Um, look at positional pattern. Yeah, yeah, positional pattern is cool. I have to look at that again. Oh, you're still on a brother. Fucking God, for fuck's sake. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't do that. I hoped I could do this, but I can't because it's one too many steps. Like he doesn't realize he has to convert that to a tuple and then deconstruct a tuple. So I would have to write a deconstructor that actually allows me to do this. Like if I do this, can I do that? Should be, maybe? No, but it should be able to do. It can do this. <laughs> Like, can it? Can can I do? Can I do this? No. Okay. Never mind. Forget about this. Um. I can do this. Funnily enough, so that works. Um, okay, but still, a deconstructor would be good. Um, but I'm going to look into position of pattern again. That's something with pattern matching where you can. Yeah, yeah I remember what you can do with that. That's cool. um, Alex B writes, also in that video, oh, I found you from the video you did for A Long Way Down. Uh, the game released and the video was playing on the Steam page. Oh, is that today? I thought that's not out yet. Let me check. That today, that's a paid promotion I did. I recorded like three days ago or something. Oh, wait, did they release today? I thought they released tomorrow, but yeah, right. Today's Thursday, the 16th. Yeah, they, they, I should be live. This should be my body here. Yeah, there we go. There's my video. I didn't realize that's today, but apparently it is. Yeah. So. That's Goblin Studios. They regularly ask me to make videos for them. They can put on the Steam page. And they give me money for it, so I do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, cool that you found me through that. That's neat. Um, also in that video there, you got Steam messages and you could hear the sound every time. It was very triggering. I checked every time, maybe something. No, I. That's. It. That should be impossible because as a, I'm pretty sure I didn't got any Steam messages. B. Uh, I have sound disabled for those, and C, they should not show up on the, on the, oh yeah, well, they didn't show up, I guess, but you, you heard them, but I'm pretty sure that were your notifications, because I'm pretty sure I don't get sounds, I would be very confused, I, I would have to check, if you can give me a time, no, you can't give me a timestamp, you can't have the video, but I'm, I'm pretty sure my video doesn't do weird noises, if that would be horrible, but I'm, I can't think of a way that could have happened, because I didn't hear anything. Um, and my Steam doesn't do sound. Um, really writes that he's so glad he uses Rust. Uh, Rust is an, an interesting language, certainly. Um, it's, I think, a little bit too... The, not widespread enough for, for me. So um, there's not a lot of ecosystem as far as I've heard. Uh, but it definitely has some very interesting concepts. And it's very, it's a little bit too low level. It's more like a... C replacement. Um, well, I wanted to like I'm I'm I would potentially be interested in trying it out because I, it has some really cool concepts like the idea that you don't need like a um that you that you like the that that memory or the things belong to other things 
the memory management aspect uh, it's wild I, I had a i saw it or saw it like, like a colleague of mine did a presentation about it it was really interesting but i never tried it well, it's a cool language certainly it's one of the languages one of the few languages i would be happy to try actually or i would be considering doing like i i, I think most languages are just subpar to c sharp but rust is just a different thing and it has some really cool concepts Oh, must be the one from the person who's playing the video. Yeah, that makes sense, Alex. That totally makes sense. So I think it's Tavrox. You saw it here on the on the, on the Steam page. Let me review. Um, Tavrox is the community manager, and I sent him the video, and he's broadcasting it. So it's probably him. I'm gonna write him that really quick. Wait, let me switch it out. Um, so he's aware. Um, maybe he fixed it already, but yeah, that would be that's that that might be it. Uh, someone need that he could. So probably on the machine it's running on the notification sounds are on. Um, thanks for telling me. Really, really writes that Rust has a good type system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Um, definitely. Rust is a really interesting language. It's one of my top languages I, I find interesting and I would be interested to trying out eventually, but I don't think I'm going to have the time for that. Um, so, but we wanted to do something else. We wanted to check the positional pattern. Yeah, God damn it. I have a hard time typing with the mic in front of my face. Or not, the face is not a problem, but uh, I have it like on my desk. Should probably get an arm thing. Uh, because so it's blocking my arms a little bit when I'm typing. So you probably get like an, uh, a mic arm, which is like floating above the, the desk. But you use Rust on the web? Is Ru oh yeah, Rust can be it's probably WebAssembly compatible. I assume. Let me check really quick. Rust WebAssembly. Is Rust based on C? I'm not sure. Rust and WebAssembly is a thing apparently. Ah, fancy. Fancy bullshit. Positional patterns. This guy. This guy writes really, really good blog posts. Matt's Torgson. He's a he's a king. Um positional pattern. What was that exactly? Yeah, it's a deconstruct pattern, right? So you can say point. I can deconstruct it into an in tuple tuple. And that allows me to do this and now var uh, x and y are ints, which I then can use here. So I should write a deconstructor. Close it, I'm an idiot. Wait, didn't I? I think it's here somewhere. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, wait, that's not gonna help. Can I deconstruct? Where's the deconstruct? My only one, my own one. User defined types, there we go. Uh, it has to be called, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, right, that's the, that's the syntax, right. Rust is based on LLVM. What is LLVM? Never heard of that. 
coordinate and now we do a deconstructor here Bring x y and then what like that no beep 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 what can i not no, that doesn't make sense what's the example Blah. What's the example here Oh, it's, yeah, it's out variables. I'm an idiot. Um, um, I obviously have to, yeah. I have to, I have to assign the out variables. So X is X and Y is Y. There we go. So now I should be able to write, should be able to write um, var X, var Y, Chords, and now these should be coordinates. Sweet. Can I also? That would be interesting. Can I say int here? Yeah, I can because I can convert the coordinate to an int. That's so sweet. That's so good. I get a nullable issue here. Why? 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 Why, get an, why do I get a nullable warning here? Argument of type int cannot be used as an output of type coordinate for parameter x. Used as an output. Do you even see the, oh, you don't see the pop-ups. Oh, shite. Can I, that's a setting though, right? Uh, Good damn it. Can I somehow set OBS up so you see the pop-ups? Oh, um, really, I didn't, I didn't mean that Rust is similar to C, but if you're looking at Python, for example, Python um, has its own syntax, but it's like the, the interpreter run is compiled in C or is written in C. Um, and therefore it's very C compatible. Like you can load C by libraries. And that also makes it easy to put it to WebAssembly because WebAssembly is um, C compatible. C sharp is not painful. C -sharp is, I think C sharp is pretty great, to be honest. It's better than most other languages. I'm, I can't compare it to Rust because I never did Rust, to be fair. But if you compare it to Java or Python or JavaScript or uh, PHP or whatnot, C sharp is great. Or C. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I can't really say anything about Rust, but, uh, can I tell OBS to not fuck this up? OBS window capture show pop up or not pop up, but tooltip. I can do display, but I don't want display. I guess it doesn't. Possible. <laughs> Recording Visual Studio. <laughs> I guess that's not possible. Uh, I th I th I'm not sure if people convert Python to WebAssembly. I think they do. I think they should be able to, to at least.
Yeah, there we go. Python scientific stack compiled to WebAssembly. Compiling Python to WebAssembly. That's a thing. Oh, actually, maybe not. I don't know. Um, that's off topic, really. I guess it's not possible. I might switch to display capture next time, but I really would rather not, to be honest. But meh. Um, what do I actually want it to do? Oh yeah, I wanted to check that. Okay, so let's see. So you can't see the error message here, but the error or the warning is argument of type int cannot be used as an output of type coordinate for parameter x in in the deconstructor due to difference in nullability of reference types. So int obviously is not nullability and uh, not nullable, obviously because it's an int. Um, and the core the deconstructor expects a coordinate x, which is also very much not nullable because it's a struct. I, do, I don't know what, why he is... I don't understand that message, to be honest. Show potential fixes. Uh, it doesn't show one. Except this, the, um, suppress. Hmm. Hmm. I can't make sense of that message, to be honest. It should be totally fine. It, it should be fine. Like it's converting int to coordinate and then put it in a deconstructor. Can oh that probably doesn't that might not work actually. No no it this might not work. I'm not sure this might actually not work because it has to convert. Like if it does it in the correct order, it should work. Like in theory, it should create a coordinate, put it in there, and then convert the coordinate to the end. But I'm not sure that's actually going to do that. It's probably going to try to put the end in there. Which should still work? I don't know. It's a little weird. It shows this message. Can I suppress the message with an explanation mark? No, with a with a question mark. No. Would have would have been weird if that would have helped, but that's strange. Well, I don't know why that is. To be honest, that seems might be a. It's probably not a bug, but I can't make sense of it. But maybe it's the compiler misunderstanding something. Like it's a new feature and it's not perfect. Weird. Anyway, um, what time is it? Half past midnight. Uh, half past midnight. Is that correct? My English, my English tonight is not very good. Half past midnight. Is that that eleven thirty or is that two or thirty? I think that's midnight uh, zero or thirty, right? It's an American comedy murder mystery film, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's 12.30. So, no, um, so it's 11.30. So, should get to bed eventually. So, let's try to get this to wrap up. Um, I think I kinda, I'm kind of happy with this. I don't know, I'm probably going to fiddle around with it a little more eventually. But if I, for the time being, this is pretty cool. I don't know why I get this warning. The other warnings make sense because I'm null and stuff. But um, not a fan of this not being an interface, but there's, it's not really possible to make this an interface. So I think going struct is fine here. Probably, hopefully. I hope I don't regret that decision later on. But we'll see. I probably want to have to extend it a little bit 
eventually to be able to have negative coordinates for a thing like a vector or something like that shows a relative position. Well, I can do that then. So yeah, I should also probably start actually implementing some classes and not just throwing interfaces out there. Um, but for now, this is fine. So let's get rid of this and commit this. Edit some basic interfaces and structs. And I should probably get something going. So I'm actually not just, I should probably get like get the class that actually do something and uses those interfaces. So it's not just theory and I actually see how I have to use it. So I know the use cases and not just blindly doing stuff here like I'm doing right now. And then also what I want to do is start as early as possible writing uh, unit tests. Um, so probably already for this class uh, and like check that you cannot actually put something negative in here and stuff like that. And well, it's pretty trivial. I'm not sure if it's worthwhile to write tests for this, but no, it's not really, not really. Like I could write a test for for this, for this, I guess. Would be very trivial. Oh, I guess you can test stuff like that. You can test all these things, but it's really, really boring. Like those tests will be very boring and I'm not sure it's worthwhile to do them. Um, I think I'd rather not and write tests for something useful. Um, I don't know. Someone who is very much into test-driven design might disagree, and I can't really judge because I never really did TDD. Uh, I don't know. Do you write tests for really trivial stuff? This is not even logic. This is just assigning stuff. I don't know. It's logic to some degree, but it's, I don't know. It's so basic. I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, so, yeah, let's start back. No, no, go back. Go back there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I was, I had fun doing this. Um, not a lot of people watched, obviously, but people interacted, which which is is a, is a good sign. So people were interested, at least a few of you. Um, so I think I'm gonna keep that going and see how it evolves. Um, so I'm definitely gonna keep going programming, and I'm just talking about actually streaming it live, putting the bots on YouTube and stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue doing that. I think um, it helps. It, I think it's it slows me down actually quite a bit, and probably would be much faster if I wouldn't talk to chat. But I would actually well, effectively probably not because if like the thing is I'm focused on this right now because I I'm streaming it. I'm not gonna watch a stream be, um, and get distracted by that or YouTube videos or whatever. Um, or read something on Reddit or I don't know, uh, or Twitter or whatever, um, because I'm actually focused on this right now. Sure, I'm going to go a little bit off topic here and there and talk about different languages and, and games and whatnot with, with you guys, folks. Um, that happens, but that's also because, I mean, that's still probably less distraction than actually just sitting here on my own. Um, and having a stream open on the other screen and, uh, and uh, yeah, being distracted by social media. So um, this is probably still more productive than just doing it offline. That, that alone might be a reason to keep the stream going. Um, it's also more, more fun, to be honest, because I like talking about code programming. I, I like doing that. I like talking about games, but I also like doing, uh, talking about why and how to do things. 
It's fun. And also it's helpful. Sometimes people throw interesting or helpful advice in the chat. So that's cool. Oh yeah, wait, one, one more one more thing. What, 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 I, what I actually wanted to do, or what Bunglist recommended doing, if we get the deconstructor, we can actually do pattern matching. I want to try that really quick, I think. So wait, what was the position of pattern? So what is the trick here? So I can have an object. So we have like a static white test. So I can have like an object O. Actually, yeah, it can be object. And then I can say if O is coordinates x var y cons uh, I don't do I, I can't do console here I don't have a console this is a <laughs> class loop well, whatever I'm not going to execute it anyway wow that's pretty cool Oh, that doesn't work? Constant value is expected. I, I think a five is pretty constant. That's weird. Should be able to do that, right? Oh, no, it's not constant because it has to create a coordinate struct. Ah, that sucks. That sucks. So Alex writes, another one of my favorite streamers is Quill18. Oh, I heard of that guy. He's streaming coding as well very often. He calls for Ludum Dare and stuff. What's that guy? I remember that name. Wait, Quill18, who's that? who's that? Definitely remember that. Does he have YouTube as well? Who's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what do I know about him? I saw something. What does he do? Why do I know him? I don't know. I know him from something. I don't know. I mean, he's reasonably successful with half a million stops so maybe I just stumbled aboard, um, um, across him at some point yeah this this stuff I wonder if I can fix it somehow so this works wait I have an idea I have an idea here it's a little bit redundant but if I actually do this. Still not. Well, it's the wrong one. No, wait. Uh, no. No, no, no. Wait, that's not what I need. Um, I need this one. I need a deconstructor with int. It calls ambiguous shite. Uh, still ambiguous. Darn. Uh, this, I have, uh, this might be possible somehow. Like you can do this. You can't actually. Yeah, because yeah, I have to read this now. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, you can't do that. You actually have to do co um, coordinate here. 
but you cannot do like the so what this is supposed to do is it checks if o is a coordinate struct with y being five and if that's the case it's going to capture the x value in the variable x which you then can use in here um, this doesn't work however because this has to be a, a, a constant and while five is a constant he has to convert a five into a struct coordinate of type coordinate um, which makes this not working anymore um, so if I would change this back to int, this would actually work. Um, so if I get rid of this, this struct, if I would just do this, it would probably also work. Yeah, so this would work. But as soon as I have two deconstructors, it's ambiguous and I can't tell him which one to use. Why can I not say int here? Why does he not know which, which one to use? If is yeah, if I get a third one, it would probably work like a dummy parameter. Not int dummy. Or can I do this actually? Is that possible? That works. That's ugly as fuck though, but it works. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in here without checking it into Git. I'm just going to keep that open so I can think about it next time. Uh, if you find a, if you have an idea how to fix this mess, that would be cool. Um, okay, back to this. Um, no, this, this. So yeah. Um, as I said, I, I enjoyed doing it. I think it's probably more productive than doing it on my own offline because I'm getting, I'm, I'm focused on it and getting distracted less. So that's a plus. Um, a few people seem, seem to be interested, but that's a plus as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try that again. Um, just to reiterate really quick what I said at the beginning. So the idea is to build this class library, which is going to be the core foundation um of core game mechanics which i then can use to create an a, a, a game or maybe multiple games of um so the idea is to have a 2d factory puzzle for lib um, which i'm going to call pionectory because i'm bad at names and egocentric <laughs> egocentric um and then i have multiple different ideas to what to do with it um First, I'm going to build a very small prototype front end so I can actually test it and fill around with it. And then I'm going to make it, or the plan is to make it a real game. And it's either going to be a puzzle game, it's going to be a weird, crazy, cool roguelite spaceship game, or it's going to be an idle game. And I prefer this one, the factory, the spaceship thing. Um, but uh, who knows? We will see when I get there. So that's a plan. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Um, thanks, uh, Alex Speed, who's wishing me a good night. Thanks for joining. And focused on the project, <laughs> kind of, by just being there. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'm TH Pine. Have fun and see you next time.